Good evening and welcome to our worship from the Light of Christ campus of the UPG. As we've been doing uh, for many weeks, we're going to start with a prelude hymn sing. And the first one is definitely uh, a favorite of many of us. From the ELW, it's 824, This Is My Father's World. Our second hymn is number 717, Let Justice Flow Like Streams. Very appropriate for our times today. Our third hymn is number 817, You Have Come Down to the Lakeshore. Oh, 
Our final prelude hymn for this evening is number 770, Give Me Jesus.
want to welcome you all to our 13th week after Pentecost celebration from the Light of Christ campus of the UPG. We thank Linda Ma for sharing her wonderful gifts of music with us today. We also thank Rich Hawk, our live stream ministry coordinator, and Kenda Riley, who does so much for our community behind the scenes. But most of all, we want to thank you for joining us during this worshipful time. The prophet Jeremiah speaks of the incurable wound of his suffering, yet finds in God's words the delight of his heart. When Peter doesn't grasp Jesus' words about suffering, Jesus tells the disciples they will find their lives in losing them. Such sacrificial love is described by Paul when he urges us to associate with the lowly and not repay evil with evil. In worship, we gather as a community that we might offer ourselves for the sake of our suffering world. Let us pray. God of grace, you have given us minds to know you, hearts to love you, and voices to sing your praise. Fill us with your spirit that we may celebrate your glory and worship you in spirit and truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our worship continues with our prelude music, Give Me Jesus, arranged by Sims. We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another.
Gracious God, have, have mercy on us. We, we confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Show us your mercy, O God. And grant us your salvation. Give us the joy of your saving help again. And sustain us with your bountiful spirit. Give peace for all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Keep the nations under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among the nations. Let not the needy be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. O oh God, in you we live and move and have our being. Guide us and govern us in this day by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and times of our life, we may not forget you, but remember that always we are walking in your sight. Teach us to live in the Spirit, who made us your sons and daughters, in the love that made us sisters and brothers, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, we thank you for your Son, who chose the path of suffering for the sake of the world. Humble us by his example. Point us to the path of obedience and give us strength to follow your commands. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from Jeremiah. O Lord, you know, remember me and visit me, and bring down retribution for me on my persecutors. In your forbearance, do not take me away. Know that on your account I suffer insult. Your words were found, and I ate them, and your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord, God of hosts. I did not sit in the company of merrymakers, nor did I rejoice. Under the weight of your hand, I sat alone, for you had filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unceasing, my wound incurable, refusing to be healed? Truly, you are to me like a deceitful brook, like waters that fail. Therefore, says the Lord, if you turn back, I will take you back, and you shall stand before me. If you utter what is precious and not what is worthless, you shall serve as my mouth. It is they who will turn to you, not you who will turn to them. And I will make you to this people a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail over you. For I am with you to save you and deliver you, says the Lord. I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked and redeem you from the grasp of the ruthless. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 26, read responsively. Give judgment for me, O Lord, for I have lived with integrity. I have trusted in the Lord and have not faltered. Test me, O Lord, and try me. Examine my heart and my mind. 
For your steadfast love is before my eyes. I have walked faithfully with you. I have not sat with the worthless, nor do I consort with the deceitful. I have hated the company of evildoers. I will not sit down with the wicked. I will wash my hands in innocence, O Lord, that I may go in procession round your altar. Singing aloud a song of thanksgiving and recounting all your wonderful deeds. Lord, I love the house in which you dwell and the place where your glory abides. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Romans. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Re rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peacefully with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All right, I'm going to invite all of our young folks to um, come forward. Come up close to the screen, to uh, whatever, computer or TV. And um, I want you to meet my friend here. This is Perry. Perry is a can of paint. Now in a little bit, Vicar Jamie is going to read a Bible story where Jesus says, if you lose your life for my sake, you will gain it. And that sounds pretty confusing to me. So I thought about Perry. You see, Perry is in this can of paint. He's the paint, and he really likes it in there. Um, it's nice and quiet and dark and peaceful. And I said to him, but Perry, your paint, you belong on the wall to give everybody happiness and joy, and so people can see you. And he said, uh, no, I like it in here. It's dark, it's quiet, I can sleep, nobody's sticking on a brush inside of me or a paddle inside of me to swirl me up. No, I want to be in here. Well, you know, I thought about that, and I thought, well, you know, Perry might want to be in this paint can, but I don't think that's really what he should do. So I opened the can. I got to tell you, Perry was not happy. And then I stuck a paddle in it to stir the paint and he was grumbling pretty loud at me. And then I put a brush in, and he screamed bloody murder. He did. Trust me. And then I painted him on the wall. And he was this gorgeous shade of blue. Ah, it was so wonderful. And you know what? Then Perry kind of saw himself on the wall, and he thought, you know, I liked being in the can, but being on the wall where everybody can see me is so awesome. See, he thought to save his life, he had to stay in the can, but really, 
to gain his life, he had to go on the wall for everyone to see and be joyful. And that's the way it is for us. When we follow God, we follow and we share God's love. It's like we're painting on the wall this beautiful shade of blue, like the sky or the sea or, you know, just a beautiful shade that everybody basks in the glory of that beautiful blue. And when we share God's love with one another, we are like that for the world, just sharing love and joy and peace. So let's get out there and paint the world with our love and our joy and our peace from God. So until next week, high vibes. See you all soon. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 16th chapter, beginning with the 21st verse. Glory to you, O Lord. From that time on, after Peter confessed that Jesus was the Messiah, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. Everlasting God, teach us to be faithful followers, to deny ourselves for the sake of others, to take up the cross and walk in your ways. Guide our footsteps that we would not become stumbling blocks for others or ourselves. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Poor Peter. Last week he got it so right, and this week he gets it so wrong. Last week when Jesus asked the disciples, Who do you say that I am? Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon of Judah, Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. This week, when Jesus tells the disciples that he must go on to Jerusalem, where he will undergo great suffering at the hands of the Jewish authorities, be killed and raised three days later. Jesus rebu or Peter rebukes Jesus, saying, God forbid it, Lord. This must never happen to you. But Jesus turns to Peter and responds, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. In just a short period of time, Peter goes from the rock of Christ, that Christ will build his church on to a stumbling block to Jesus. It's like a discipleship tennis match. Peter, bold and faithful on one side, and Peter not quite getting it on the other. He gets it, he doesn't, he gets it, he doesn't. 
To help us better understand Peter's response, we need to remember that the Jews were an oppressed people of the Roman Empire. The Jewish people were waiting for the Messiah, whom they expected would bring military might and unity to the country in order to overthrow the Roman Empire and that we, to restore the Jewish kingdom to its former glory. But instead, Jesus is a lowly Galilean among the Jerusalem establishment an establishment which, conditioned by political circumstances, quickly identified Jesus not as a colleague, but as a threat. Jesus has just told the disciples something that looks completely different from their expectations, that he would suffer at the hands of the Jewish leadership, be killed, and on the third day return to life. And Peter wants no part of this scenario. Never, Lord, he says. This should never happen to you. Jesus rebukes Peter, calling Peter Satan and a stumbling block. The Greek word for stumbling block, scandalon, is used nine times in Matthew, and each time it refers to something that causes a person to sin, a temptation. Jesus experiences Peter's desire for Jesus not to suffer and come to harm as a test or temptation and Jesus rejects it. When Jesus says, get behind me, Satan, we hear echoes of similar language that Jesus used at the end of the 40 days spent in the wilderness being tempted by Satan, when he says, away with you, Satan. Jesus goes on to tell his disciples, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. Heavy stuff right there. Let's unpack this statement in, into three different phrases. The first is, if any want to become my followers. I read this past week where a pastor likens the life of a Christian to a game of follow the leader, with Jesus as the leader. If you're like me and you've never played this game as a child, the rules are pretty simple. The leader chooses the path to take. The followers either follow along or they drop out of the game. As a follower, you don't get to tell the leader which way to go or which path to take. The, the path could be smooth and easy, or it could be rough and challenging, even frightening. As a follower, it's a matter of trust and choosing whether or not to stay in the game or drop out. That's pretty straightforward. But the next phrase is a little less so. Let them deny themselves. What does it mean to deny yourself? Jesus is not speaking of self-denial in the sense of being opposite of self-fulfillment. If we simply give things up, that doesn't make us a Christian. It simply makes us empty. To deny oneself is to focus on others instead of ourselves. To deny oneself is to identify and remove the barrier that stands between ourselves and God. I invite you to take a moment and think about what it means to you personally to deny yourself. What is it in your life that prevents you from living or being in the world in the way that Jesus calls us to? What in your life keeps you focused on yourself instead of on God and others? Is it anger or resentment, expectations or plans, clinging too tightly to time, money, or talents, binge-watching your favorite TV show on Netflix, or maybe it's the fear of not knowing where God is leading you? We must each answer this question for ourselves each and every day, and we have to decide if we will make the choice to deny self for the sake of our relationship with God and others. This brings us to the third phase of Jesus' directive. Take up their cross and follow me. What does this mean for us? Paul's words from Romans show he understood what this meant. Paul tells us to let love be genuine, hate what is evil, and to hold fast to what is good. We are to extend our hospitality to strangers. 
Thursday night in Bible study, we talked about hospitality in terms of helping someone who is pulled off on the side of the road with car trouble. We mentioned the fear that keeps most from stopping and offering to help, fear of safety or well-being. We discussed ways we could offer help while being safe, one of which was to call for help on behalf of that person. Friday night, God challenged me to put my money where my mouth is. I was driving home from work. It was a little after 10 o'clock at night. It was dark. It was drizzling a little bit. And I came across a car pulled off on the side of Route 309 near the 22 interchange. They had pulled a bunch of stuff out of the back of their hatchback. Looked like they were probably fishing out the spare tire. And it was a darker stretch of the highway. The I don't know if there was a light out, but it was dark, and it wasn't particularly wide on the shoulder. And as I'm getting on to 22 to go home, I thought, where's my hospitality? And so I called Lehigh County Dispatch, and I let them know what the situation was. And they sent a car out, a patrol car, to check on these people. And as I was getting off the phone with the dispatch, I got a little emotional. It, I felt kind of strange, but as I said goodbye, I got like teary because God called me to be hospitable, and that felt so good. I was just overwhelmed by emotion. There are many other ways that we can show hospitality to others. We could pay the bill for the person who's in the drive through behind us or pray for the cashier at the grocery store who has just been less than friendly to us. Make the first move and call that family or friend who you've not talked to in way too long because of a disagreement. Feed the hungry. Give a drink to the thirsty. Speak out against injustices in our society. Doing these things may be countercultural and cause waves with those around us. They will not always be easy things to do. Making the choice to follow Jesus comes down to putting our faith and our trust in Jesus. Just as in the children's game of follow the leader, the choice to continue to follow Jesus is one that is always before us. The difference between the choice to follow Jesus and the children's game is this. In the children's game, or if in times of life when our trust falters, if you were in the children's game and you dropped out, game over, you lose. But just as the Lord told Jeremiah, if you turn back, I will take you back. In life, Jesus is always extending that invitation for us to follow him. And so the question becomes, who is your leader? Will you follow the world and self? Or will you follow Jesus to Jerusalem and to the foot of the cross? Amen. Amen. We now continue with our hymn of the day, Take Up Your Cross, the Savior said, number 667.
now confess our common faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe, believe in, in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. And on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of faithfulness, you bid your people to follow Jesus. Set the mind of your church on divine things. Grant us trust in you that we lose our lives for the sake of Christ and thereby discover joy in life through him. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God of wonder, the earth is yours and all that is in it. Heal your creation and give us eyes to see the world as you do. As the seasons change, pattern the rhythm of our lives in harmony with all creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all nations, you call us to live peaceably with all. Give us ears to hear one another, even those we name as enemies. Fill all leaders with mercy and understanding, that they advocate and genuinely care for those who are poor and most vulnerable in their communities. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. God of salvation, you promise to deliver us. Give those who suffer a strong sense of your presence and love. Accompany those who are uncertain. Raise the spirits of those who are despairing and heal the sick. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of community, you call us to rejoice in hope be patient in suffering, and persevere in prayer. Make our community of faith a workshop of your love. When we quarrel, bring reconciliation. Help us overcome evil with good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all grace, you give us everlasting life. In love, we recall your holy ones who now live in your undying light. In our remembering, give us a foretaste of the feast to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift up our individual prayers to you. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. We invite you to say hello and share the peace with our worship community. We want to thank everyone who was able to generously share financial offerings this past week. I also wanted to remind you all the PayPal offering button on the support page of our website, or feel free to mail your offerings to the church office where we weekly process those offerings. And for the people of St. John's Windish, a simple reminder about our Vanco app, or continue to mail in your offerings. We continue to share our combined resources with people within our community who remain in need. Your continued 
continued financial offerings allow our ministry to thrive and flourish, even during these difficult days. We give thanks and praise to God for the generosity that all of you have modeled during this difficult time in our history. For those who may be joining our worship and unable to make financial offerings during this time, we thank you for your generous prayers and continued support of our ministries in numerous other ways. We pray that all of God's children would feel blessed by the love of God and the love of one another during these challenging times. If you haven't already done so, please remove the veils from the elements set aside for Holy Communion. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. On the night in which he was handed over, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after the meal, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy, thy will be done. done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come to the banquet. For now all is ready. The body of Christ given for you. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. the blood of Christ, shed for you. Amen. I now invite those who have abstained from receiving Holy Communion to speak the prayer below as those who have received this sacrament Maintain silence for personal prayer and reflection on the grace that God pours out to us all.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace unto eternal life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God of, of abundance, abundance, with this, this bread, bread of life and, and cup of salvation, you have, have united us with Christ, making, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your Spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Tomorrow we will be, hopefully, fingers crossed, the weather cooperates, offering our in-person outdoor worship. Remember, this is going to be at 9 a.m. That is a change, a little bit earlier, at the Lutheran Center. If Mother Nature doesn't cooperate, we'll make a decision by 7.30, and we'll place messages on the office phones and send out emails and put it on Facebook. We'll do as much as we can, um, but hopefully um, it'll be good. As part of our continued ministries to care for others in the world, we are asking that you might keep your clean and unripped plastic bags in order that they might be turned into blankets for those less fortunate than ourselves. These bags may be dropped off on the back porch of our Light of Christ campus or may be handed in at our outdoor worship celebrations at the Lutheran Center. We're also asking that you might consider purchasing back-to-school supplies for local students. A full list of what we're looking for was shared in Thursday's email and is on the UPG website, too. A collection basket can be found on the back porch of our Light of Christ campus, or you can bring the items to one of our outdoor worship celebrations at the Lutheran Center. And we thank you in advance for your generosity. Just a reminder that through your help, we have an abundance of resources to share during this time. If you or someone you know may be in need, please reach out to either Pastor Jerry, Pastor Suzanne, or our staff, and we would gratefully assist you as we are able. A prayer for the power of the Spirit among the people of God. God of all power and love, we give, give thanks, thanks for, for your unfailing, unfailing presence. presence and, and the, the hope you provide in times of uncertainty and loss. Send your Holy Spirit to enkindle in us your holy fire. Revive us to live as Christ's body in the world, a people who pray, worship, learn, break bread, share life, heal neighbors, bear good news, seek justice, rest and grow in the Spirit. Wherever and however we gather, unite us in common prayer and send us in common mission that we in the whole creation might be restored and renewed through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.